questions, all five of them today. Um, if you want to spend five hours going through them all over the weekend and stuff, um, you'll be able to go through all five. I'm going to show you where they're going to be on the website now. But I'm going to very quickly um, go through uh, what we're going to be learning today. Um, I'm going to do a very brief, quick introduction to the ACORN Education website and what the virtual school looks like. And we're going to do a login. We're going to also do um, show you how students are going to be enrolling so that you know how to do that. If a student asks you, and um, at any point as well, we're going to set up support groups and you'll be able to ask us directly on those groups. I'm going to show you how the message center works and how to go into your course. Those will be your subjects um, and how to add lessons, quizzes and assignments to those courses and um, how a student will be completing a course. And then finally, how you will be able to review um, quiz answers and also mark assignment work. Okie dokes. So if we go to the ACORN website, um, this is just the home page. On the home page directly, you're able to log on to the virtual school's ePortal. This is just the home page. Feel free to go browse the other pages, but the virtual school menu tab is going to be our main focus. And if you go, just click on that button you will see a virtual school page pop up. And here you'll see that there are the three schools that um, ACORN Education has partnered with. Um, we have done a lot of sort of set up work around Apex High School. So I'm going to give you a, a um, quick tour about how they have been set up. But if you go into Forest Village or then also Apex Primary School, Let's see what the Forest Village page looks like so far because we're still building it. You'll be able to see the grades, a timetable we will um, load um, depending on how Wendy wants to set up her days with her educators. Uh, let's go through to the Apex High um, portal, basically. We are, here we have um, the four different grades that Apex High has currently. Obviously next year, grade 12 will be implemented. If we go, so here's their, uh, their timetable. This is how they've laid out their days. And you're able to log in from this point as well, if you're not already logged in. I'm going to take you to grade eight. And grade eight, the students have to obviously do all of the subjects. Um, you you will see all the grades there. Thank you for taking those levels off. Um, and what the students need to do as soon as they log in, they would need to browse to this um, side of their grade and they will need to go into each grade and basically enroll. But I'll get back to that now. Let's go back. Let's really open up a, a, a subject just for, for you to see what that looks like. This is what a subject looks like. And we call it courses. So if you could all just make a note very quickly that on the ePortal virtual school system, um, courses are, is the terminology that the um, LMS or the learning management system uses. Courses are the subjects. Uh, you as educators, teachers will be called instructors. So if you ever see the word instructor, that is you as an educator, your scholars or your learners are called students. And the other terminologies you'll just get to know very well over time, like um, the lessons and all of that stuff and the quizzes. This is the general layout of a um, subject for Apex High. We've got a bit of a notice here of how the students can um, go to their message center because we, we launched the message center without an introduction training session like the, this in the, uh, over the past week. Uh, there's a little bit of a feel good, I call it Ruha messaging, we can do this. And then this is the layout of the subject. And it's basically sectioned. And again, you'll see this now as I go through more details. There are separate weeks there. There are different lessons. 
you do this, you'll do that. Uh, some lessons and uh, courses have little quizzes and that is nice feedback to get back from the um, learners as the course goes on. I'm going to just check where I'm at now. <clears throat> so I'm going to quickly go back to the virtual school and then we're going to log in. <clears throat> Bernice, can you just please check with support that uh, when I go on to virtual school that the uh, message center is active? just want to see that B is there. There's no Bernice on. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Um, that's a very cool support query right there. So in your virtual school, you've got a sub menu tab there where you can, some people um, might not realize that that is actually a button. So we've just replaced the button there as well. So you've got another virtual school button there. Then you'll have my classroom, which is your dashboard section where you will see where to do everything. And then there's also a, another button here called messaging center. And that is basically the communication hub in a group format where um, students and um, instructors or educators will be able to uh, have discussions around each subject. So I'm going to quickly take you into the resource section that um, all of this content is going to be stored on. So on this page, we are, as I'm, you'll see now, now uh, when I go through a course example, that we've got all of these example test courses what that, that we've been sort of playing around with and testing. There's a few blanks. Um, we're going to be working with test subject demonstration today. And you will be able to go into those courses and um, enroll in them as well as a student for you to see what we've done there just to recap yourself. Um, you will need to go into the course and then as a student at the bottom of this course's content, you'll just click the enroll now button. I'm not logged in now, so I'm going to be asked to log in. Let's quickly log in. I've got my um, document that's, that's been shared from, from Abraham. Thanks for that. Uh, so those are my login details. I've already logged in today, so my computer has remembered it. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in with my details. <coughs> and what's, oh, sorry. I'm just gonna go back to this um, resources section, section quickly. Then on this resources page, you will be able to also just see the user manuals we've already created and the manuals that we're going to keep on creating as we get a lot of support queries for, for one thing. Um, we'll keep on updating this page as we go. And the, uh, these session videos today will simply be listed here with links to YouTube videos. So you'll be able to find that all very easily on the virtual school, then resources page. I'm going to close this guy now, and then we're going to log in. So at this point now, we have logged in, we've done a quick tour, and we are now in our classroom. Basically, that's what we're going to call it, my classroom, but this is the dashboard of the classroom. And you'll be able to see your profile, the courses that you are enrolled in as a student, or the courses that you are teaching your learners. Um, there's a small glitch that a few things were changing. The content of your dashboard will show in this blank area usually when you're on your computer. For now, it's just um, down here while we're updating um, the site still in the back end. So this will be your profile. If you click on the profile button and you'll see your details that's been loaded there already, but you are able to add some more cool stuff. And you'll be able to do that by going to the settings section of your classroom or dashboard. And here you can edit your name, you can add a phone number if you want that to be public. You can also add in a little bit of a bio, talk about yourself, don't be too long uh, whatever you wanna say about your um, education career to your students. Then you can also uh, just upload a photograph. Also on the resources 
page, I think I'm wondering whether to do that or not. We will um, or with you directly in your um, groups, we'll share a link where you can download your um, photograph. We've already taken photos of each of you um, and we've got all of those done and dusted. We will um, share that with you and you can just use that photograph or any other photo you want the students or your learners to um, recognize you by for that to be on your profile. Uh, you can add links in there, really not relevant in the system, but we do. You can also reset your password there if you don't like your password. Your current password, new, confirm that. There we go. That withdraw, those kind of icons there we are busy removing. Uh, this is a system where um, tutors basically can earn through giving courses. Purchase history will also go away. Um, in the My Courses, tab there, you will see all of the courses that you are an instructor to. So those are the courses that you as an educator or a teacher will be teaching your um, scholars or the learners in your class. So my one course I am an instructor to right now is the subject demonstration course or subject and we will be editing that shortly. The students will see the courses that they are enrolled in. And here I've enrolled in quite a few courses. And these are all my subjects or courses that I have enrolled in as a student person. Um, I'm a little bit all over the place. I'm a diverse person. I do grade eight and 11 at the same time. Um, so this is how the scholars will see their different subjects. Obviously it'll be the same grade in their profile. Okay. When um, as a instructor on the system, as an educator, you will be able to see, and we'll come back to that here where students have done um, their quizzes. It gets submitted into that section. You'll access it there. When they've done assignments, it will get sent there and we'll mark that from there. That's pretty much it, the unnecessary buttons like that and that and, and yeah, those ones we'll remove. I'm going to show you now where to, for a student, if you're a student, how to go and enroll in your courses. So again, I'm going to go to the Apex High school page let's go to grade eight and a grade like grade eight also with the primary schools um, all the subjects or courses in the grade um, your scholars will obviously need to enroll in all of those subjects grade 11 and 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 10 for instance only need to se select the courses they have to do that they've chosen to do so you would just simply go and click on that course or subject, go all the way to the bottom. We've already shown you what that looks like. And you will just, um, there's a button there. I've already enrolled in this course. You'll just click on enroll now. Let's go to LO quickly. So note that I'm doing grade eight LO. I haven't enrolled in this course yet, so I'm going to click on enroll. When I go back to my, um, my classroom, as a student, I will now see in enrolled courses that I have added LO to my collection of courses. And then I will easily just be able to go onto that course and go and do my work. You'll also see here that there are categories, Apex High and Grade 8. Those are just for the structure of the website on, and the system and the total enrolled in amount of um, students on it. If you as a instructor enroll in your own course, that number will increase. So it just gives a total of enrolled um, users to this course. What's very cool as well, as you can see when also it was updated there. You'll also see who, what instructors are 
um, or educators are on this course and who's actually got editing rights for it. And that is here where your um, little bio will pop up. So um, a student will be able to, a scholar will be able to see um, more about the educator and also your very cool profile pictures. I'm going to check in with my list here. I'm going to go over into the messaging section now. Uh, just like with the enrollment of the courses that the students have to do, um, you help, um, have to also make sure that you are in the right groups for each, um, for each course. So if we go to, let me just refresh that. I'm going to open up for, there we go. Thanks for that fix, guys. Um, we're going to go over to the message center then. So there are basically, if I can summarize it very quickly, um, as a educator and then also a student, first three things you're going to do as soon as your, your subjects are all set up and we let you know that you can go and check out your work on the on the e-portal, the virtual school. You are going to log in. You're going to, as a student, enroll in your courses, if you're a student. Um, with the instructors, you will automatically be assigned to the uh, courses or subjects that you will be working on. Uh, the students just have to enroll in those subjects. Uh, together potentially with their parents or for the much younger grades. Uh, you can now see my profile of my message center. Um, when I'm on my message center, it's almost like a little bit of a Facebook page um, and you've got groups. I've also got a profile. You can go browse around. Um, there's not a lot. There's not like real, real Facebook, but it's pretty close. Um, I can see notifications, messages that have come in, activity, let's go check that out, quick sticks. And I'll be able to see that I have been posting two groups in the last little morning. So for you to be able, for you to go to your um, groups and assign yourself to the, your subject groups, the groups will be named the same name as the actual subject. Here, I'm going to show you all of the groups. So you are going to find, as a student and also an instructor, as a teacher, you will need to find the subjects uh, or courses that you have to join to become part of that group. As an instructor, you will see all the messages that the um, learners post there, and the learners will see all of the messages in your subject group that the instructor or the educator posts. If you want to go and search your group, it's super duper easy. So I just want to quickly, what do we call our demonstration? So let's look for a keyword demonstration. Okay, there we go. So I very easily search there. So if you've been adding a subject, here I've got my subject, grade eight. Let's just even copy that over go to your groups page and search that, there is the group. So all you need to do is you've just got to go and join the group as an instructor or as a student. You can then go, once you've done all of that little bit of admin, it's now done. You can then go back to, you can go to my groups and then you'll see all of the groups that you have been assigned with or joined. Um, just clear your search box there so that you can see all of it. Otherwise, it'll just show what, show what you've searched for. So yeah, I'm part of six groups. I've joined these few in the course of the morning. I've also joined my, the group I made this morning for subject demonstration. And here I can say, um, anything, ask a question, etc. A cool trick uh, that I think the educators should do is while you've got your course content open here, when you're doing your class with your learners, so you've got reference to it when a, when a, when a learner asks you a question, just keep the, the um, 
this group open at the same time. So you'll constantly see if there's new action. If new content comes through, it'll automatically pop up or there will be a button here that you can just say update feed and it'll just update that and show you the, the newest content. So you can work between two tabs, which is quite a cool trick. So how we have um, figured uh, the best way for you to mark your attendance, as you would in class, I assume, um, every day before your class starts, is you would read out your, your scholars' names and they will raise their hand or whatever. Same kind of concept here. I'm going to announce as a student my name and I'm going to say present. I'm just going to post that. You as the educator would then see that, ah, Ricardo just said he's present, he's obviously online now and I can mark his attendance. So quite cool for you to mark, keep on marking your attendance as you would normally, however you would do that. And then you can say, cool guys, as the instructor now, I'm doing role playing here. Let's start the class. Head over to the subject. And just post that to the guys. And then they see, cool, let's go do that now. That is basically how the group system would work or the messaging system. That's all in your messaging message center. I'm going to open very briefly for some questions. If you didn't, um, if you missed something or if you didn't understand something, are there any questions? Um, Ricardo, so on this platform, you have to be, so as educators, we have to stick to that timetable. So say if my subject is um, grade eight LO, and on the timetable it says on Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 till 11, um, I have to then be in front of my laptop or my phone at that time so that you could get that, that real time feedback from them. And the same with the learners. I'm just worried because sometimes, I, I mean, if it's online, it, uh, um, a, a learner would be able to maybe do it later than the time that they then that sit in the in the timetable or is it really that um, I don't know rigorous or uh, precise? I think that's between Wendy and Abraham. So I'm going to hand you over to Abraham quickly. Awesome. Hi, um, um, hi, Tamara and, and everyone. Um, no, that that I think uh, won't is not going to work okay. um, the precise timing on things both on your side and on the learner's mm. side. So the, the vision is that the lessons are uploaded and available for the learners to access when they are, uh, when they access them. Uh, there are suggested timetables for the learner uh, to follow and for the family to follow at home. Uh, for example, you know, nine to 9.30, they're doing home language and 10 to 10 30 doing maths that's just a suggestion from our side to to encourage a routine at the at the at the home but we realize that that might not happen for it for all the all the learners and so um i think from a teacher perspective it's more more in line with at certain times in the day you are able uh, you're available for uh like office hours oh, so you're available to answer questions uh, during these times when the learner um, asks those questions. I hope that makes sense. For, for those of the, that, that you spoke about now, Bram, with, the, um, with the, us being available, is that now going to be the timetable where those are the times that the teachers could be available? So that means when the learners are struggling, whenever they are, then they know that at that particular time, their teacher will definitely be available. Or should we just be like on our laptops all the time waiting for learners to do? No, I don't think you should be at your laptops all the time <laughs> waiting for learners to <laughs> answer questions. I think that you should be very clear and, and Wendy and the SMT will have more guidance on this, but I think you guys should be very clear about when you're available. Okay. Um, and, then, and then during that time, you're not in meetings with uh, you know, colleagues, you're, you're just available for them to ask questions and chances are they might not ask any questions during that time but then that's when you'll be working on the other lesson plans and, and feedback and stuff like that when do you want to jump in yeah, I just, 
to say that um, also uh, there are, I think, about four different teachers. Let's say, for example, um, uh, uh, Tamara is responsible for home language and she's uploaded or she's done the, the preparation for the home language lesson. There are, four, there are three other teachers who can also be available, who, who's busy typing back and giving children feedback um, online. But Ms. Wendy, for the intercent, for the um, for our phase, it's just the grade six and seven teachers. So it's just Gloria and I, for example. We're not a lot. For mathematics. Just, yeah. For example. So, so, so you'll see, and I, I like what um, Ricardo said. It follows the same format, like uh, when you do messaging in a group on a Facebook page. So that the, the query doesn't necessarily disappear. The the question or the uh, the the yeah the the query that the child has doesn't disappear. It's it's on there. And so even if you you've missed it or the child wasn't able to ask that question or didn't look at the lesson at the time when you said you're available, the uh, the option is still there to give them feedback at um, at the time when when you're picking it up. Abraham, am I understanding that correctly? Yes, to my knowledge, yes. Yeah. So I think the fear right now, and, and I've had this uh, in, in, in a lot of the sessions of, so does that mean I need to be available when from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock when there's a lesson online? Um, and then I need to be available from this time to this time so I can answer children's questions. And then I need to be um, available for office hours. I think the idea is just that in your, in, in your day that you that you do set aside um, some time to be available just to go onto this, this website. The timetable that was given through again uh, for the learners also and for teachers is a suggested timetable. Um, and the more I'm looking at, at this platform, it, it actually to me seems like, like we'll have a little bit more uh, leeway as far as the, the interaction with the children is concerned. And so you need to, again, like Abram just said earlier, um, you need to just make time uh, that they are, that, that the time that you can give children um, um, responses or respond to them um, is, is set aside just for that. And so those are the kinds of things we also, as SMT needs to take in mind so that when we're doing a grade five meeting on Monday afternoon, um, that we're not doing at the same time that we're expecting teachers to be um, available or you need to send through. Um, this is the time that I'm available for learners so that we can also uh, plan our actions um, and our days around uh, what the different grades have, have set up. It might be time when firstly you and Gloria want to be together for mathematics and we're saying, listen, we want to have a grade six meeting and the SMT is saying we need to have an SMT meeting. And so I think the same kind of, of time constraints and challenges that we have in the real world eventually filters um, into the virtual world. And, and, and so as we get ourselves familiar with, uh, with this platform, that we just be um, aware around time that we need to make um, and manage so that we are now also available to our learners and to our family and to, you know, all the other things that, that we're having in this different um, different world that we're going into. Firstly, is that, are you feeling a little bit more settled? No, that, that was fine. I just have more questions. Um, if we have any issues, do we then contact Ricardo directly or do we have to go through a chain when it comes to the, the, web, the website or the virtual school? I'm going to share with you how that's going to work towards the end. So um, I might as well just share it right now and answer that question. So what we've done with Apex High this past um, two weeks in the setup of the system is that there is a Apex High support group for the LMS, which is the learning management system. If they've got any support queries, if someone can't log in or someone's struggling, whatever, we just, we've, we've got like basically a shift system where we um, have um, Quentin on support, Bernice is on support, and I'm also on support, and we manage that side of things. So you'll be able to have direct access to our persons um, in that on that level. I'm going to quickly mute everyone again and continue with the session. 
Um, so what we need to go over to now is going to how you will be um, editing your course content. So um, courses will be assigned to you as instructors. And when you log in, when we will know, we'll notify you when that's all been completed, uh, you will, as an instructor, go to the My Courses section on your dashboard or your My Classroom. Then you'll see, ah, oh, I've got courses assigned to me. That's very cool. If you click on it there, you'll go to the actual course. But then you're going to start to load your content on to the actual course or the subject. Here, you will see course info, the subject title, description, there you go. The subject title and the description, those don't really change. Um, we will assign a description to each um, subject that is sort of like a general notice for the student to constantly be seeing. Uh, at the bottom, we will make a little section for you to, to um, put a basic summary of the course, but it's not really necessary because all of your content is going to be sitting in your lesson structures. There are course settings here. Um, there's nothing for you to worry about there. There's a thing in above there, an option called BuddyPress. And this is where, this is the messaging system. This is where we link the group for the subject to the actual subject. Again, you don't have to worry about that stuff there. The course categories, you're not going to worry about that because we're going to set that out and make sure that it is in the correct category for it to display correctly in the structures of the system. The course thumbnail, we're going to keep this um, all the same style, so please don't change that. Uh, we will upload that for the system. Um, also, a video for the actual course, don't upload anything there. You're going to be working inside the course builder. You'll also see a list of instructors, which are who are the educators. They'll be placed there, and we'll be adding that for you. Additional data is just a whole lot of extra stuff that you also don't have to worry about. And here's a section in announcements that you can send an announcement to a course, for instance. Uh, let's see if you go there. Okay, so I'm going to just, you'll see, I'll go back to that. No, no, I actually forgot to go back to that in the previous one. Um, I'm just going to add that announcement to the course so long. So we're going to go through the course builder now. So there's a cool function here called new um, uh, topics. So what we've um, seen happen a lot is that um, topics are used as week one or week two or week three or sort of different themes within every week or different stages of the course that the educators lay out. You can very easily add a, add a topic by calling it week four. And you can put a bit of a summary there and you can add it and then it pops up in your course builder and you can also move it around very easily. So there you can move your topics around into the order that you would like it to be displayed on the front end. So I'm going to quickly go and find the subject in a generation um, course on my profile. So I'm going to have this page open as what the student will be viewing and what you as the educator or the instructor will be viewing while you edit and build your course. Let's go to, so the student remember will be finding their courses in enrolled courses. Ha, there's my course, my subject that I'm gonna be doing now. This is the summary page, basically, as soon as I click on one of the uh, um, objects within the topic, the week, it will open up almost like the book, and you'll see now. And this is where you go through and do all of the work within the subject or course. Okay, so here, there you see there's a video. Here I've said video set as a feature video. So remember I said do not add any feature content or, or pictures or anything to your actual course. You're going to add them in the course builder. So if you want to add a video, you're going to add a new lesson. And in that new lesson, 
as soon as you say a new lesson, a window will pop up like this. I'm gonna close this and open up one I've already edited. There, it's exactly the same. And you will just input the information you want as a little heading. You can put a very cool um, sub description or any content you want in there. This is, you're gonna be using this a lot. So this is where all of your lesson content will go. And I'm going to take you through a more structured one now. With the video here, you're going to, whenever you upload a video, you're going to first upload it to a YouTube account. So far, that's the preferred method that we have decided on or um, yeah, kind of decided on. And you will just place the embed code there. I'll go over to show you now how to do that. And once you've edited your lesson, you will just update it. While I'm on the lesson, I'm going to go to this lesson. Give me a sec, sorry. <clears throat> ah, there we go. So in your lesson, you can again add your header or title of the of the lesson. Um, any copy, copy over from Microsoft Word. Um, you can make cool bullet point lists there by using that very basic editor, make it bold, italics, what have you. There's also a numbered list. Here's a cool quote function that you can use like that. It kind of separates content. I'm going to show you what that looks like. So while you are in here, you can see what I'm doing in the front basically. So there's your bullets, your numbers, and then what the little quote blocky thing I'm a Bobby looks like. Then you can also add this type of a line that says line. So I wouldn't use that. Sorry about that. And then you've got different headings. So if you want to separate your lesson content nicely, you can very easily just select your text and you can choose what heading method to use. It's not working right now. And that basically displays it in the front like that. So you've got heading one is your biggest type of heading going down to heading six is your smallest and paragraph the paragraph setting like here would be your most simple method of text. To this lesson you can add a feature image. Sorry wait there we go. So to this lesson you can also add um, image content within the lesson. So you would simply just need to go and add media you can select files from your computer and upload it. If you double click that over there, it will load it to the library. I've already done that. So all I would do instead of uploading a file now, I would just go to media library. There's my content. Let's add a cool kitty cat because it seems that the theme of my lessons are all about cats. You'll see why now now. <laughs> You can also add a feature image. So this image here will be in the content of your lesson. Your feature image will basically display as a side picture there, like that video over there. <clears throat> Again, you can add another a video into that and you can also upload attachments. So you can upload a PDF file and I'm going to show you how, what that looks like now. For there's a lock feature on the lesson so that um, people who haven't enrolled into the lesson can't see the content of the course or the subject. Um, I think in general, just keep that tick enabled so that whenever you're on the subject, just to be able to see it. We'll update that lesson. And every time you kind of update a lesson, just click the save button, it'll save the the data to the system. I'm going to very come back to the week one where we're going to show you a um, how a PDF was uploaded. So again, the lesson box, this session um, has a title and then we've got some description there. And then just like we've added a um, image to the lesson before, we can add a PDF. So I'm going to add this PDF that is currently on the system. So I'm going to upload an attachment. I'm going to go and find my files on my computer wherever. 
Again, I've already uploaded this, so I'm just going to go back to the image library. There's a PDF waiting for me. If I want to delete that, I can delete it permanently. I just always say, be careful before you delete stuff. Just make sure you really are sure of deleting that file. Use that media, and then the PDF sits there. And what that looks like in the front is like this. You will just see your lesson content heading there. You will see your little description there and then whatever you've attached to this lesson. So if you had to open that, I always do a bit of an open a new tab so I don't have to go back, back, back. Then I can see our content there, which is very cool. I just want to go back to something first. Um, <clears throat> with the messaging, I um, always just remind educators while they've got a messaging tab open here, like I've got my group here. So while I'm training for easy back and forth reference to my lesson structure, just keep a tab open here. You can see who's messaging you while you're actively doing a class or whatever, just, um, just so that you don't constantly want to go back and redirect back and keep going back and forth. Always just have, if you want, two tabs open. I'm going to, before going over to the quizzes and the assignments, I'm going to go into copying a video over from YouTube. So what we have done for Apex High and what we'll do for Forest Village and also Apex Primary is create a, a Google or a YouTube um, account. And on that account, we are making playlists. So you can see each grade, grade nine, grade eight, grade 10 and grade 11. And when you as the educator upload a new video, you can go there, you would just select what playlist to add that to. And then it's just organized a little bit better. We could even go a step further and create it by um, subjects, but for now we've just kept it per grade. You can just select your file and continue with the steps. Um, if you want to go and grab a video from one of your um, playlists in your grade that you've already uploaded, <clears throat> all you would simply do, and in fact, with any video on the interwebs, you would just go to the video. You Good would. Morning, Let's begin with exercise. Oh, I was just confused when the sound then you just go to the video and you select share, like with one, when you want to share anything, you can share it to Facebook or any other platform. You would just select that embed thingamabob, that option. If you go to your um, lesson that you've got, your video that you want to share, you would click on video source. It will look like this. Video source, ah, oh, let me update, let's add a video. I'm going to select the embed option and there will be no, like a blank box there. What you'll do from YouTube is you'll select the embed and you will take all of that daunting looking code, which you don't have to do anything with. You will copy that. On Macs, you'll go Command C. On Windows computers, you'll go Control C for copy and you will just, add that into your little code box there. All you have to do is update lesson. Um, there is a video sizing um, uh, guidelines we are working on and that we're going to share as we um, learn more about the data usage of the site and our restrictions within the free, um, the data free zones of the website and we'll share that with you as we get to know that but basically there you would be able to just change the frame width of it but i'm not completely sure if that actually changes the size of the video that gets um, used on the site okay so that's videos covered and then when you're going okay so then we can easily add a quiz in this box that pops up now, you will be able to add a heading again and also a little bit of a description for this set of questions. I'm going to go through a um, set of questions we've already prepared called twist qu test quiz. 
and you would select your um, or place your content you want to put in there and then you would just go to save and next here I've already done um, three different question op uh, four different question options um, and I'm going to just show you how to add a question and it's very simple to just add a question you will put your question text there your question type will be from a choice of any of these so uh, and I'll go through four of them now. You've got true and false, you've got um, matching, you can create order, question types, image answering, image max, uh, matching, multiple choices, and even simple choices. We've also done a fill in the blanks, which is pretty cool, especially for language. Like the difference between your and your is quite cool. Then you've got, um, you can assign, you, you, can, you should say answer is required. Randomize will just make your questions random. And you can also assign how many points you want to assign to this specific question. You would display your points if you want to, and you can um, add a description to the question. And then you would just add your opinion. I'm going to show you the ones we've already done for our true and false. If you've already set up your question sets, um, you can easily go and edit them. You can also easily go and delete them. You can also easily change the order of them by dragging and moving that little cool arrow button. So let's edit a um, true or false. Same answer required, all of those details I'm going to go through right now. You would ask a question, is the sky blue? I'm going to select the question type. There's going to be two options that I can add, true or false. You would simply select the option that is correct. You can delete, move up and down. You would save and continue. Then you would go on to your next question. We're working with variants here, like, like different types of questions. So let's look at the single choice, all of these same um, question thingamabobs that you would put in. And here you've got more, because you've got single choice, you've got more freedom on what you want to say instead of true and false. So you would simply add another option with the title. You can even upload an image, which I'll show to you now, now and you will save your answer. Okay. Just remember that you need to select which answer is correct. I'm going to show you how to do a multiple choice by adding images. So here we are asking, what does the cat look like? And we are adding, you add an option. We've added an option here by saying it's a cat or a parrot or a dog. All you do is you, to add the image, you click on the add picture library um, icon and you add a picture that you've already prepared or uploading fresh. You can also say whether you want text only, image only, or both. Select which answer is correct. You'll save and continue. And this is pretty much how the whole system works. If you look at filling in the blanks, that's the question type you would want to um, select. Here, it's a little bit, little bit more uh, manual. So what you would do is you would We ask a question. So my name is Sunny. Okay, but you want the learner to add um, a missing word. So let's take out name, for instance. We add it into what the correct answer is. If you look at that, they would say there. If you add the dash, this little um, piece of text in there. That would be where that answer would need to go. So that will make a box for the student to type in what they need to answer. I'm just going to start this quiz on the front end so that you can see what I mean. When you have done all of your quizzes, Setups, you just go to next, 
You've got a few more options here about setting a time limit, a limit to the set of questions. You can also tell, um, a, a, allow the student to have a certain amount of attempts. I wouldn't just put it to zero or to one. I think with us learning or with them learning the system on how to do it, give them a few attempts to try because there will be mistakes, easy, easy to make. And then also just your general passing grade, make it 50%, 20%, be nice, um, but keep our standards high. And just keep your max questions allowed to answer at quite a high number so that they don't get cut off by answering too many questions. Uh, just save those and then you've set up a set of quiz questions. I'm going to show you what the quiz questions look like in the front end of what the student would see. Um, just also have a look on your phone when you're on the site to see what, um, what uh, the quizzes and the structure of the site looks, looks like on their phone so that you would know how they respond on their devices because it doesn't look like this. It looks, it's a bit more all in one column. We're going to very briefly do a quiz so I can show you what it looks like when the quizzes get um, submitted to the instructor's uh, dashboard or backend. Let's answer these questions. Is the sky blue, true or false? Let's go true, but I'm going to, yeah. What does a cat look like? We're going to select one of these options. Is it a dog? Is it a parrot? No, we're going to, oh, you can actually do more than one option. I just learned something. Let's go for cat. Let's fill in the blanks. So fill in the blanks here. My what word is missing here is sunny. Let's go for name. There's a blank question I left in by accident. What is the shape of a circle? It's obviously round, but I'm gonna go for square so that you can see how me failing or not, not failing, how getting an answer incorrect is going to reflect on the system. As a student, I will now submit this quiz. I've just done my schoolwork, that's very cool. Then I'm going to go over to a assignment. I've got to recreate the assignment to actually submit it. I'm going to show you how you are going to, sorry, my brain just glitched, how to create an assignment. When you go into the create assignments, same type of box will pop up. And again, you will create your heading and you will give directions to the student of what to do. So you're going to tell the student now to uh, write down, I love cats. You can add an attachment like the PDF before, if there's more instructions, you can give them a time duration that they've got, total points, minimum pass rate, files allowed that they are allowed to upload. Um, limit this because then I don't send you 150 photographs and also just the file limit size if you wish to um, do that. You can then create your assignment and on the front, I'm going to create another assignment just so that you can see what it's done. Test, write something sweet, jokes. And then we're going to publish our course. We've now created all three of these types of content for the course. And then on the front end, I'll be able to go do an assignment. <coughs> So on the assignment, just like with the quiz, I would just say, start assignment submit. And I can just say, I am so loving cats right now. I can upload a file if it needs to be. If I've done say, for instance, some maths work and I can't type it out easily on that box, I could just send you a photograph of my assignment. And then I simply as the student submit the assignment. Now, as the educator, 
we are going to go look at the quiz attempts and reviewing assignments. So this is the student going boom, off, I'm done there. Nice class, thank you teachers, you guys rock. As the educator, I'm going to go back to my dashboard. <clears throat> and then you'll be able to see, okay, first of all, the students will see their own quiz attempts there. So if you have enrolled in a subject or a course and you've done quiz attempts, you will see all of your results there as a student. And look at all my cool results here. I've even failed a few times. As the educator, you are going to look at your scholars quiz results on that section. So I've just done a quiz four minutes ago. In what course you can see all of these details and then what you can do is you can go and review that and if you go to quiz review ah that's the one I intentionally said incorrect for so if you're a cool teacher and you want to like you know no, I'm joking you can um, override manually override the um, incorrect answer to correct you can also manually incorrect someone like that. And that saves it on the system and that will reflect like that automatically in the students um, quiz section that they can go and review their work on. You can just go back, it automatically saved it. And then you can go see what assignments they've just done. I've just submitted that assignments test in subject demonstration. Let me go into that. And then I'll see, ah, I've just done that one. The result is pending because with the quizzes, you have set up a set of rules for the website or the um, learning management system to know what is right and wrong. With this assignment system, the, it is, it is, the, there's no right or wrong according to the website you would need to go into that and you're going to mark this work manually and you will see cool the assignment description is that um sorry this is what i as the as the student has i've submitted this i'm so loving cats right now you as the educator or the instructor would say, I'm so loving that answer right now. And you will give him nine out of 10 and you can write a note, um, lovely message, well done. And you will submit that evaluation. What the student will be able to see is in that assignment that they've done, they'll see that there is nine points given and I've passed it. My answer was that the teacher and the instructor said, lovely message, well done, and I can go to something else. Um, again, there's no, I don't think there's any pressure for the educators to do this instantly like I just have. I don't think students are going to wait anxiously for their marks to get miraculously marked as they go, especially with assignments. Whereas with quizzes, they will see results instantly. Um, on the quiz level there, I think just like with the um, attendance of your uh, learners in the classrooms, keep track of their um, results here in your system that you're used to doing in some way. I'm not sure how you guys work like that. Um, because all you will see all of the quiz attempts in a row, next page, next page. So I think as you've, um, released a class and you've looked at that and reviewed it, just, I think, just um, stay on top of that stuff. Otherwise, this list will just become bigger and bigger. And then with that announcements, if you can recall earlier on, we went to, we made an announcement in that course. I just want to find it now. Ah, so just like there's the course page there, there's an overview that is, really just that introduction. No, it's not a lot there, that's great. So if you go to announcements, you can announce stuff like that, like next week's class starts at 10. 
I would personally forget to use that tab. I've actually forgotten about it before. I would keep all the sort of like announcements and stuff in the group. So if you want to communicate messages, I think do that. But you'll learn, I think, that if you make an announcement on the group and then there's a whole lot of messages, that announcement goes more towards the bottom. Um, I think announcements here is potentially a good way of keeping only you can say stuff here. So that could be a good way where you get announcements just to recap your brain. I'm going over my time now is in um, is in the actual course builder. If you just go slightly more down, there's a section like course builder. There's a section that says announcements. That is basically that guys. If I look at removing reviewing assignments, yes, we are going to, like we said before, put all of these um, uh, sessions today on the resources page on, um, on the website. I'm going to open for about five minutes if there's any, or more, 10 minutes if there's any questions that anyone has. I'm going to unmute all of you first. Hi guys. Uh, Ricardo, can you hear me? Yes. Just a question, but when do we start building our quizzes and, and our, for our particular subjects? So, so far, um, Bernice, just um, guide me if I'm wrong here. So far, your schools are, the primary schools are launching on Thursday and Friday. So far that I know, I'm not sure, Wendy. And then we are busy preparing and laying out the courses. So we are going to, um, we are loading all the courses up for you and you've got to build your content. So you'll probably have time from around Monday to Wednesday to upload and play around. I don't think there should be pressure for you to add all of your stuff in one go. Um, I think your hands will, yeah, it's, 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 it's quite a lot to get your head around, I think. And, um, but there'll be about three days for you to prepare for at least your first or, or first or second class, you know. Also, Perfect, thank you. The test uh, classes that you've got up that we can upload. So if you're wanting to play on the test, the test classes. It is, yes. Yeah. So also on the resources page, I, we are making a, I'm just going to browse there so you can just get uh, familiar with it. On virtual school, you will just go all the way to the bottom and you will see go to resources and user manuals and there will be sample classes that you can go on to. Um, we just have to make you instructors to that. So I think what I'm going to do is if you go to, I'm just trying to figure out a system as we go now. I'm going to make a... If we just decide make, everybody who, who uh, let's, let's put the WhatsApp group up first, perhaps. Yes. If I'm going to make a, a course like this for Forest Village, test Forest Village and a test Apex Primary, okay? And what you can do when you're going into that, and we will assign all of your, um, um, we will assign all of your teachers as um, instructors to that group. So maybe what's a nice um, uh, concept to do is you can then go on there when you're editing your course, create your own topic. So just like we've got week one, week two, week three, maybe create a topic with your own name. And within that, you can play like I've just played there. Does that make sense, guys? So then you can play, all of you can play on one uh, course. I'm just... I'm a bit nervous about everyone editing at the same time, so there might be some glitches here and there. But I think just to go and chilledly play around and just, you know, go find your way around that before you start to load your content on from around Sunday, Monday. Uh, probably only by Monday. Um, Any other questions? Yes, I've got a few questions. So when I saw you doing the, the, the quiz and things, is can we, before we actively um, upload the, the quiz, can we then check what it looks like before we upload it? No. Yes. Right? Yes. And then also with that, 
say we don't want to use the quiz that, that you have provided, can we then use, um, for example, Google Forms and then upload that as well? Would that be a different way of uploading or would we still use the embedded part and then just use it towards the virtual school? I haven't, I haven't tested a Google Form yet. Um, one of the reasons we have tried to keep as much on the ACORN website as possible is so that it's for the data free concept. Okay. Um, so we don't, we, we didn't go the Google Classroom sec, um, method. So as soon as you go off the site, that's going to start trying <laughs> data. Uh, that's why we've also just gone with the messaging like this. Um, I think you can be creative within how you're going to set up your classes and questions and stuff like that. Just bear in mind, as soon as you go off the site, it's not a data free zone for that threshold anymore. Okay. And then my last question is um, the, the learners, I'm assuming, are also getting like this type of training session as to how they can navigate the, the virtual school. Yes. So uh, we're not doing one on one training like we are now because you would also probably get quite a lot of questions. So you will have direct support with us on those WhatsApp groups. Send us a screenshot. I'm struggling with this. What do I do here? I'm trying to achieve this. How do you think I can do that? And um, so you'll have support with us. What we are going to do, and it's quite a, quite a big task, is to, um, like with these videos today, we're putting them on the resources page. And all we have to do extra now is show the students how to navigate the site on their phones. So we've just got to get that um, user manual to do this basically on a video yeah, level. I think uh, video videos, videos, videos for the children work best. Okay. Sorry? Uh, short Sorry, videos. short videos for the children we found work best. Yes. So, so if we put together the videos and we just send those through to the, to the children, they, they've navigated through their phone very easily, we've found over the past week. Yeah, so we've done um, little picture stories of step-by-step -step stuff. And even then, I mean, I'm quite used to following those kind of, um, uh, to give our directions like that in the work we do. Um, uh, even videos are still, as, yeah, you just watch the video, you see in, in real time um, how that works. So we're just going to produce a few videos that is done on a cell phone. Okay, and then I've got the last two questions. Um, when the, with the, with, with, you did, went through the enrolling of the learners, because I also saw that, for example, there was 23 kids that was enrolled. Can we, do they enroll themselves? Or do yes, we they have to enroll themselves. And then do we, how do we see that that particular learner is enrolled? For example, if I have 40 kids in my class and there's only three, 23 that I see has enrolled, how do I see who has enrolled? Who's not enrolled. I'm yeah. going to quickly go onto the website's back, back end. I think if you get to a point where you really want to investigate that, if you're feeling like you're missing some students, um, also with your attendance group chatting, you'll see who's going to go do that now. And then you'll just see, start to see that, that number rising to the number that you're expecting. If you're getting very worried at any point, again, support query us on the group. Okay. I can then go on to um, the back end. Go. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You can ask the next question so long while I listen. Oh, um. <laughs> And then also I saw that when, when the learners ask a question for something that they don't understand, um, can we, instead of typing out a response, can we then like a quick response to that question to really record ourselves for like a voice note for the learners? Yes, I've had that question before and the, um, that messaging server um, platform doesn't have a um, voice note option yet. I think you would need to upload a file. So it's not as instant as WhatsApp. Um, which is a little bit tricky for us to get used to that now because we're so used to WhatsApp. Um, but we can, we must just have a continuous low uh, list of, of functionalities we want to keep adding to the website is what I think we should do. Um, I think yeah, typing does take up a lot of time. Um, I found that for sure. So voice noting is much easier. Again, voice noting just also takes a lot of data. Uh, not not a lot as video, but it's also constant back and forth uploading and downloading. 
Okay. Um, so just bear that in mind as well. But we'll Recorder? Yes. Sorry, um, I know that you took us to the attendance um, via the message group. Is that the only way that we can keep track of attendance of our learners or is there a quicker way um, to keep attendance? Like I was just thinking as you were explaining re regarding the quizzes or something, you know, can we put part of the, say, okay, you know, in order to show teacher that you have um, followed the lesson, please complete this one or two question, um, you know, true, false quiz or something like that. Could that not maybe be a, an easy way to track attendance, seeing as you might not have it like you live? Can do that. So if you're doing that in your, in, your, um, in your subject or your course, if that's how you're going to be tracking your attendance, go for it. If that works okay. better for your learners and for yourself in your system, I think do that. That will just then pop up in your quiz section. So then you'll just okay. see all of these quiz queries coming up. You might just find that then your previous day or sessions quizzes move up to, to the following page. So then it just gets a little bit harder for you to track work that you've got to still note down from what you've, um, from previous quiz submissions. But I think that's a quite a good creative method of tracking your attendance. Yeah, and Thanks. participation. I think it's very participation, clever. Participation, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Again, when you're marking and noting down um, and just documenting on your own side the answers from those quiz answers and stuff, you'll also start to see what your attendance is like. And if you're seeing a student has missed two or three days because they haven't submitted any quizzes, I mean, that's obviously non-attendance, even if they message to the group. So I think you'll definitely see your attendance through um, your response from the quiz section to people, through um, uh, learners submitting their work like that. Anything else? You're very quiet, Christelle. <laughs> I have a question for Ms. Wendy, uh, maybe Brom. Yeah, go for it, Clinton. Ms. Brom, uh, Ms. yeah. Uh, Ms. Wendy, um, there were talks mentioned that the grade seven and the grade 12 might start school on the 6th of May. Yeah. Um, the question is, for how long will the website be active? Uh, uh, for, certainly, for, indefinitely almost. So if you've got content on, I think it should just stay on there. So um, we're not going to just like take the site down as soon as the lockdown's gone. I mean, that is, there's a lot of valuable resources that um, learners and scholars can still use as tracking back to homework or still catching up if they didn't do too well in the lockdown. I just think you can in the future also keep on using it as a homework platform. So you can say, hi guys, your homework is on the virtual school on Acorn Education. Go check it out and go give me some quiz answers there. That's your homework. Cool. Bye. See you tomorrow. So there's a lot of potential around the system as well with that. So I'm not going to just take it down. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I need to start the next session. <clears throat> this is so funny. <clears throat> so I'm going to say bye bye, guys. Thank you for listening to my croaky voice now. And uh, we're going to set up the support groups. Um, we're going to try and get to that today. We're going to start setting up the courses um, sort of like tomorrow. We just want to finalize. We have the, the, your subject structures and grade structures from Abraham. And um, very well done, very cool, thank you for that. And um, I just want to confirm how the system is working before I actually start the upload process with Quentin, our, our teammate, and Bernice. Um, so we're going to work on that over the weekend. And then by Monday, your courses will be up and you can just log in and start to build your courses. Um, and we can communicate notices on the WhatsApp group. So what we've done with Apex High as well is if there's something wrong with the website, like, oh, I just crashed this morning, we're going to do this or that, I just sent out a nice message saying, notice, site down for 10 minutes, go log back in, whatever, whatever. So we communicate like that with you directly as, as, as the educators. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Am I seeing you again, Wendy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think this is my last one with you for today. I've got two two more left for the day. Then I'm finished. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. bye.
I'm ending the meeting now. Bye, guys.